Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that thunder? I, I have no idea if this will end up in the video. But goddamn, that thunder is nuts. Like a goddamn tank rolling through the neighborhood. It's it's nuts. Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today we are looking at a surprising compilation record from The Sword entitled Conquest of Kingdoms. Metalheads may have been alienated by more modern records like Higher Country and especially Used Future, but as far as I'm concerned, none of that really matters. Because the way I see it, the sword occupy a space similar to that of Mastodon and even Metallica. Not to the point of being especially influential or iconic, especially not to that particular extent, but more so in the sense that their first four records are so incredibly good, so incredibly heavy, that they literally cannot even be debated as being anything other than that. Like, say what you will about Saint Anger, Once More Round the Sun, the aforementioned used Future, Metallica's first four records are still amazing, Mastodon's first four records are still amazing, and The Sword's first four records are still amazing. For these reasons, I was very intrigued by this compilation conquest of kingdoms. An absolutely massive career retrospective in which the sword unearth and fully display for the world a slew of long-forgotten live tracks, covers, demos, alternate takes, and even a few brand new previously unreleased numbers for the world to indulge in. A rare kind of compilation that doesn't reek of the corporate greed and cynicism often found within the wide array of box sets and greatest hits albums released periodically through the year simply for the sole purpose of milking an artist and milking your love for that artist. Feeling much more genuine and honest, as if The Sword are not treating this as a way to simply clear the shelf for a future studio album, but rather as a full-blown studio album. To put it very simply, folks, this is a compilation that all fans of The Sword, new and old, need to get their hands on as soon as possible. Contained within this nearly two-hour project are some of the best and most interesting works that The Sword have put out to date including a slew of live tracks, many of which recorded so early in The Sword's career that the band hadn't even put out an official debut album yet, and a variety of alternate and unused tracks that, even if they were made available to the public before, have not been this widely presented. Those aforementioned live tracks are particularly special, as they showcase a youthful spirit on fire that truthfully wasn't even that represented on the band's debut album. They're far more raw, they're far more primal, and the sound mix does a really great job at making you feel as if you are with the sword in that moment in time. As you notice almost firsthand just how quickly the band is evolving, just how much more confident they become in seemingly small amounts of time. But I've got to say, my favorite moments on this record come within the alternate takes of previously released tracks and in the form of brand new previously unreleased tracks, as they not only again show the sword in their absolute prime as far as songwriting is concerned, but oddly also show perhaps some of the more ambitious material that the sword have put out to date. Take for instance the alternate version of Turn to Dust, a track previously featured on the band's High Country record. What was once a monotonous yet dramatic number is transformed drastically into a weird space rock, punk rock fusion number complete with raucous riffs and the psychedelic infusions found on the aforementioned high country. Like imagine the misfits after taking a shitload of LSD and you're kind of in the right ballpark. Another great example, a completely brand new track like Daughter of Dawn in which most of the electric guitars are traded in for much more natural, rustic, acoustic guitars. Giving this thing a much more loose, folk rock, jam rock feel and vibe while still retaining the doom of the sword. 
Even some of the cover songs on this thing are really ambitious. Take for instance the band's version of I'm Waiting, a track originally recorded by the Sonics in 1966. What was once a primitive hidden gem of rock and roll has been transformed into an absolute metallic banger. I mean this thing just absolutely radiates a big dick metal energy. Or perhaps most impressively take a look at their incredible transformation of John the Revelator, a gospel blues almost negro spiritual style track that is almost 90 years old. The dread, the misery, the anti-war, the anti-racism call to action of that original number is very much maintained within the sword's new paint job. Now emboldened not only by a fresh coat of paint that hearkens to the metallic black soul of zeal and ardor and the more contemporary blues and boogie of the Black Keys and the Alabama Shakes, but also by its release in the middle of an unprecedented series of pandemics in the United States. Like, holy shit, The Sword have just released perhaps the most poignant song of their entire career, and they've done it pretty much by accident. Unfortunately, the rest of the covers on this album rarely rise to the level of energy and power found within He's Waiting and John the Revelator, but in the band's defense, they are still competently performed and produced from beginning to end. They won't be for everyone, particularly for those of you still writhing over used future, but these covers of tracks from ZZ Top, Kiss, and a few more are far from harmless, and at the very least do provide a little bit of breathing room in between these more epic and dynamic moments. I am extremely impressed with this compilation. I mean, the amount of quality material cram-packed within nearly two hours is itself remarkable. I mean, it's a compilation that's so good that it has reminded me just how much I love The Sword, just how much I appreciate those early records. And weirdly, this compilation has even given me a newfound respect for other records that maybe are not quite as popular and beloved. Well, excluding Used Future, that's still pretty lame, but hey! Five out of six ain't bad. I'd happily give this a four out of five. This is a must-have for longtime fans of the sword. Hell, I'd argue that following the aforementioned use future, this is exactly the kind of thing you need to hear right now. It somehow manages to both relish in nostalgia without fully pandering to you and showcase innovation without alienating its core audience perfectly balancing any and all reasonable expectations that we would frankly have for a new Sword album. It just happens to come in the form of a big-ass compilation. And honestly, if you're a longtime fan that still isn't convinced to check out this album by the end of this review, all I can really say is please consider the fact that this is like literally the third ever compilation I've reviewed on this channel. Like, I don't usually see the point in talking about these kinds of releases, but this is that fucking good that I just, I needed to go out of my way to talk about it. It's a must-have for longtime fans, a fantastic entry point for new fans, and if we are counting compilations in our best albums of the year so far, I would call it one of the more ambitious and exciting compilations I've heard in 2020. Four to five, a seriously fantastic collection. And that is it for the Metal Melts. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown immediately. And you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.